ano mga, I was re- reading uh, some of your um, articles no na nabasa popular media uh, sa sa internet and um, in the at the beginning of the pandemic nung March 2020 you wrote that fake news is like a virus no uh, uh, and uh, p- please explain no why 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 did you compare uh, fake news to a virus at particularly a crucial time nung kumakalat pa lang yung pandemic. So, um, we know in other parts of the world, especially in the US, there are a lot of movements that are spreading misinformation in the context of health, right? And and uh, and, and medical and uh, medical information and science. Um, and that um, in, 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 in an ideal world, um, COVID would easily be, could be addressed more efficiently if people are more receptive to scientific information and listening to experts and um, scientists and doctors. But because there's this other problem uh, that the World Health Organization actually acknowledges as infodemic, um, there's that, you know, it's, it's a bundle of problems. There's a pandemic, the virus is spreading. There's also the virus of false information spreading. And I think uh, why it's called the virus I guess why I use the metaphor of a virus to describe um, this information as a crisis is because it's really social in nature. Um, because there are people you trust, even if they don't have the expertise or the credentials to claim, I can, you know, I can be, I can talk about COVID vaccines, for instance, even if I'm not a doctor, but I trust this person. Uh, there's that dynamic of, you know, I believe not necessarily in the, you know, institutional authority of this person, but because of our social relationship. Um, that's why when you're surrounded by people who are more susceptible to this information, more likely you will be more open because you trust these people. So, iba na yung concept or I guess notion natin ng trust nowadays, especially because there's also a lot of anti-establishment rhetoric happening. We know that there's a lot of anti-media populist uh, set, uh, rhetoric being thrown around by the state, by other actors. Uh, there's anti-science uh, 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 promoters uh, out there. So, in in the uh, in in the context where there's heightened distrust of institution, where do you seek information? It's in the alternative sources, which are not people who can really vouch for this information, but they do are are out out there and you know are quite popular in fact because of that you know social capital they have online. Mm-hmm. Well, it. Ano, dito sa konteksto rin ng uh, pandemya, no? parang may nakita akong irony dito na you, you compared fake news nga to, to a uh, virus. No? And uh, you know, after the pandemic was declared, nag-lockdown uh, sa Metro Manila and all over the world, and all, most people were basically spending a lot more time in front of screens. No? So may nakita ka rin bang irony dito na you, you know, people were safer from... Uh, you know, COVID viral, viral inf- uh, infection, but were actually became more vulnerable to the virus that is fake news because they were spending so much time uh, on in front of screens. Yes. So we are always at home, as you mentioned. Therefore, our access to that part of reality outside of our homes is impeded. No, there's a hindrance to actually confirm if something is really happening, um, and. The, that's one of the reasons why it's difficult for somebody who's not exposed to that uh, to, to what's happening outside of their homes to confirm it's really true because they don't have access to that to that to those events to those activities so they rely on other testimonials out there if somebody says 50,000 attendees pumunta sa rally ng isang politician uh, it's really hard to verify if you're just at home, correct? So there's there's that, uh, I guess, uh, less uh, sources out there for you to confirm particular events. So there's that. Wala hang um, ex- personal experience kung baga to, to claim na, ay, oh, totoo, I was there, nakita ko siya. Mm-hmm. The thing is, the disinformation environment is fueled by a lot of money. And there's a whole machinery out there. So kung nood ka na nood ng video, eventually, kahit na nood ka ng mainstream media, darating ka dun sa mga content content na possibly problematic or my disinformation kasi um yun nga uh, the the ubusan lang content out there at eventually pupuntahan pupunta pupunta ka dun sa mga um, I guess conspiratorial content mm-hmm. and I, I say this because uh, I've seen this happen in, in my research um, as well and how um, ultimately these disinformation vendors are in fact really 
uh, masters of the platform. Even if, you know, true and verified information are out there, it's not appearing in the top search results, for instance, mm-hmm. because they're not able to leverage the affordance of the platform. Mm-hmm. Yung mga influencer na to, nyari, sa YouTube, tumataas sila sa search ranking. Dahil alam nila na para makita ako, maging visible ako sa YouTube, I know how to play, you know, how to you know, label my video, how to, how to put the um, description, what hashtags to use, etc. All those makes you more competitive in, in the economy of information. Hi, I'm Howie Severino. Check out the Howie Severino podcast, an original for GMA News and Public Affairs. New episodes will stream every Thursday. Listen for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms.